Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video in this algorithmic pattern series. Yes, we're back. So a number of you have requested that I add more videos to this series and I haven't yet gone over all of the patterns. So I decided to continue to add videos to this series until eventually I've covered all of the relevant patterns. So today's pattern in particular is actually a very important pattern to me because it actually helped me to get my first job in the field. Now there are a few leak code problems where you can make use of this pattern. I'm not exactly sure how many, but it's recently come to my attention that this pattern is actually common in the interview space. But at the time, that I initially created this series, I wasn't aware that this pattern was common, so I didn't go over it. But yeah, so the pattern that we're going to get into today is called merging intervals. So let's just jump right into the pattern. So what is an interval? An interval is just a subset of a number line. So if we have a number line here, we can say that a subset of this number line or an interval on this number line starts at negative two and ends at five. And we'd represent that in interval notation like so. So this interval represents a set of numbers lying between negative two and five. Now the set of numbers represented by this interval can either include negative two and five or they can exclude negative two and five. And in interval notation, we can say that the set of numbers should include negative two and five by enclosing them in square brackets. This is called a closed interval. There's also what is called an open interval, which is essentially the opposite. That is, the set of numbers does not include negative two and five. We can represent this by enclosing the two numbers in parentheses instead of square brackets. But for this explanation, let's just focus on closed intervals. So now that we know what an interval is, let's take two separate intervals into consideration. So given two intervals, these intervals can either overlap with one another or they can be completely separate from one another. In other words, not overlap. And there are multiple ways in which intervals can overlap, and there are multiple ways in which intervals can be positioned such that they do not overlap. Now, basically what we want to do is, we want to merge the overlapping intervals like so. And the non-overlapping intervals, we just want to leave as is. And that's basically the goal of this pattern, merging overlapping intervals. So if we imagine that we're given a list of intervals like this, the easiest way to see which are overlapping is to put them on a number line. But how does doing this translate into code? Well, if you notice, the original list of intervals that we got is unsorted, right? But when we move them onto the number line, the intervals will naturally sort themselves by the start of each interval, the start being the left value in the interval. That's because the number line is inherently sorted in ascending order. So in order for the intervals to occupy a space on the number line, they have to conform to the order of the number line, which is in ascending order. This means that in code, even without the visual aid of a number line, we know that if we sort the list of intervals by the start of each interval, the position of each interval in the sorted list will be representative of the order in which each interval will occupy a number line. So that's actually the first step to this pattern. We need to sort the list of intervals if they're not already sorted. Once the list of intervals is sorted, we can simply iterate through each interval in the sorted list and compare the start of the current interval and the end of the previous interval and see if they're equal or if the start of the current interval is less than the end of the previous interval. Here, the start of our current interval negative two is equal to the end of our previous interval, which is also negative two. This means that they just barely overlap, as you can see on the number line. So since they overlap, we want to merge them and then move on to the next. Now you'll notice here that our new previous interval that we'll compare our current interval to is the merged interval. And that merged interval's end is one, which is greater than our current interval's start of negative one. And as you can see on the number line, that means that these intervals clearly overlap, so we need to merge again. So that's that's three intervals that we just merged into one interval. Now moving on to the next one, the start of our current interval three 
is greater than the end of our previous interval two. This means that they don't overlap, as you can see on the number line. So we don't merge, we just move on and leave it as is. And same here, five is greater than four, so we don't merge, we just move on. Lastly, the start of our current interval seven is equal to the end of our previous interval seven. So they just barely overlap, which means that we need to merge them. And when all is said and done, we're left with these three intervals here. And that is the merging intervals pattern. If this video was helpful for you, please don't forget to leave a like. And if you're interested in more content like this and learning more patterns, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And just a quick note, the purpose of me making these visualizations for you is for you to be able to watch them repeatedly until the pattern eventually is ingrained into your brain. So if you still feel like you don't quite understand this pattern, I encourage you to watch the video multiple times so that you could kind of get a visual understanding of what's happening so that you can in turn later on be able to visualize these things in your mind on your own. Well, at least that's the intention. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next one.